Many forms of dysautonomia, orthostatic intolerance, POTS, hinge around this problem where we're actually having a hard time getting blood flow into the brain. And then we're kind of watching how the body is backing out of that, how it's compensating for it. And we may be trying to like just treat those things, right? So maybe taking a medication that tries to increase the blood pressure, blood pressure is fine, but I'm still feeling like I've got these symptoms of hypoperfusion. I think that's something that a lot of people can relate to. So how do we help people in their homes start to do some sort of a pre-screen before you go to the doctor that helps maybe point toward how well am I doing at get perfusion in my, getting cerebral perfusion into my head? How well am I doing at getting blood flow into my brain? Okay, so one simple tool that we have for that is by using your vision. So if you think about it, most of the things that you do throughout the day, you generally keep your eyes open for. They're a big portion of how we take in the world, how we control our own body, and how we just interface with life in general. So a whole huge chunk of our brain is designed and geared toward just helping us to be able to see. So it stands to reason that if we're having a hard time being able to process our vision, then there may be a, rel a relationship between cerebral blood flow and what's happening with your vision. Not to mention that when we think about the arteries that come up the front of our neck and they turn into the middle cerebral arteries going into the brain, the first branch is actually called the ophthalmic artery and it goes to the back of the eye. So it has a big impact on whether or not we can see clearly, if we see colors sharply, if we're able to notice that, hey, we're getting, getting some blurring in the vision. So one of the ways that we can start to look at this is really simple at home. Maybe you'd like to do it with me. So if you look where you're sitting right now, if you're in front of a computer or somewhere where you can just look off into space, you might notice that there's something kind of out there that you can look at and you can see if it looks clear or not. Words work really good for this. If there's something, you know, like, if you've got like a, you know, breathe, laugh, love sign on your wall or something like that, maybe that's what you look at. But something out there that lets you be able to see if you can see it clearly. And then just while you're sitting up tall, you kind of catch a baseline of how well your eyes are working. So see them together. But then you may look at just the left eye and look at just the right eye. And you'll notice if one's maybe a little sharper than the other. And some of that may be just, just acuity, right? Like that's the way your eyes are running these days. But this is kind of like the baseline. So you can see where your starting point is with that. Then what we can do is we can move our eyes to the side. So you may find from here, I can find a target over here, kind of off 45 degrees, 30 degrees to my left, and then hold my eyes there and do the same thing. Again, looking at something clear. If that's harder to judge, what you can do is just take one giant step over to the right, keep your head straight ahead, and then cut your eyes back over to your original target so it gives you a more clear way to kind of keep the variables the same. And then you do the same thing. You just check back and forth, and you see if that looks a little bit different when your eyes are just held to that position. And then we can do the same thing, taking a big step over to the other side, same thing, You'll just turn your eyes over and then check them again. Now, hopefully they should look the same because just turning your eyes one direction or the other isn't a super big task. That's something that we take for granted. But some of you might notice that as you're looking, you may feel like that eye starts to like get a little darker or the acuity goes down or you may notice like you get some little blotches in there or the color changes. So those things are worth noting. Then you can compare that to looking straight ahead again and then you just keep your head forward and you turn your whole body over like this so your chin's now over your shoulder and then you can do that same thing you want to try to keep your chin over your shoulder while you do it for me i gotta kind of take my hand and go like this to make that happen but i'm just going to look at and seeing if that clarity is the same with each eye and you'll just kind of note if any difference and then you'll swing around and do the same thing to the other side Okay, using that hand to cover your eyes like that. You can go back and forth and see if one looks more clear than the other. Notice if there are any color changes, like they start to get darker or dim, or if they get pale looking, those can be really helpful. But the question you might have right now is like, why bother doing those tests where you're looking at eyes versus moving your head? The reason we do that is because turning your eyes, just eyes only, is going to have more to do with the control systems of your eyes and then just processing that vision. 
Whereas when I turn my head and neck, now I'm actually creating some structural change within my neck and I might notice that I may actually occlude the artery. The joint position of my neck, if that's irritated, may change the processing in my brain and give me a different outcome as well. Either way, both of these things are things that you should be able to do pretty easily, no big change at all. But if you're noticing that my vision changes when I do these simple head movements, then you probably want to note that. And then we start to think about the bandwidth or the visual processing speed. And might that be impacted by perfusion into the brain? So are we actually changing the blood supply that's coming up through that neck into the brain and it affects the output of those eyes? And if we're noticing it tends to happen on one eye versus the other, then we want to look into that side of that perfusion. You might notice that when you move your head and neck that one eye is affected on one side and then when you switch the other side it might flip. So all those things are possibilities and they help us to kind of start to point to where these perfusion errors might happen. But again, these are just the super baseline ones. If you're looking for another layer of, of exploration, you can do the same thing by taking a red piece of paper, popping it on the wall in the same spot, doing those same tests again and looking to see if the intensity of that red changes. So you might notice that it gets like more purple or maroon or it might actually get black with little splotches in it. And that can be another way to do the same test. So you can look at it against color and you can look at it against acuity. And another thing that you can look at is being aware, if you're on your phone right now or if you tend to be in this position where you're close, is noting that if I spend a while here, when I look up quickly, to be able to look off into the distance, do I have a hard time being able to keep acuity or do my eyes get blurry when I look off, but then they can clear up at one point. So if those are transient things and they're not just purely acuity, then those can be good indicators too. At the end of the day, the whole purpose here is to try to just do some measure of pre-screening, take some of that data collection into your own hands. And so you can start to satisfy some of those curiosities around is this my heart rate that's going wrong? Am I having a problem with my blood pressure? Am I able to get normal perfusion to my brain? How can I start to think through some of these things so I can ask better questions when it's time and be able to get better outcomes from my physician? So I hope that that's really useful. Please leave us comments. Let us know how that goes. We'll be happy to, uh, to help however we can in that process for you. So thanks. Good luck and we'll talk soon.